Freeways divide cities. They cut neighborhoods in two, disconnecting otherwise close-knit communities with their imposing presence and high speeds. While they have their place in the modern urban landscape, they serve a better purpose for long-distance travel between cities and regions, rather than to destinations within them. If you're new here, my name's Diana, and welcome to Sandy Beach, a vanilla build for beginners to the game. Our city has grown quite a bit yet, and we've put a lot of focus on public transportation. But travel between the two halves of these cities is still difficult. It's at this point that we have enough money to invest in our infrastructure. So traffic in this interchange is still quite bad, and I think there's a more efficient way to solve this than just the traditional solution of adding more lanes. 90% of city planners quit one lane before fixing traffic forever. Because this corridor carries both traffic from the outside connections as well as local residential and industrial traffic, a best practice we can use is to reroute this highway around the city to give outside connections their own way around the city as a bypass and then reconnect these neighborhoods together to enable local traffic to travel between them much more easily. When I first started the city, this was the entrance that we were given here, and I upgraded it to a cloverleaf interchange and modified it a bit over time. But I think now it's finally time to get rid of this monstrosity and heal this entire area. So we're gonna need to pause the game because it's gonna mess up quite a bit if we don't. And now what we're gonna do here is we're pretty much just going to remove this all and replace it with a boulevard of sorts. I am gonna keep this section of elevated highway because it's not causing too many problems disconnecting the city as there is plenty of connectivity underneath. Now we could go ahead and just build an elevated highway all the way through it, but it doesn't solve the problem of being connected to this outside source here. So let's go ahead and start. So for this first bit here, we're gonna keep this tram line at ground level. And we are gonna make this six lanes the whole way through, just so that we have some consistency here. Now the next interchange that we're gonna delete is this monstrosity. It's created such a crisis here that we had to make these unique little bridges to get across it so pedestrians had some sort of way to get to their jobs. All of this is going to be gone and we're going to add in a new neighborhood here. Now it is a darn shame that we have to get rid of this interchange, but I have some ideas for this that we're going to come back to in a minute. Let's get this boulevard in. We want to get rid of this overpass as well, and we have a bike road that we want to use. Now I could connect these junctions up, but I think that's pretty close for junctions along a collector road, so I'm okay with leaving that one a cul-de-sac and connecting it up here instead. Now actually, we're going to do something else with this. And with this here, we're actually going to make a roundabout. So how we want to do that is actually I'm going to downgrade these for just a second to dirt roads so they're easier to work with. I think a roundabout will be a great choice. And if it doesn't work there, we can redraw that in. So we're going to go about $140, which is about seven units on each side. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to redraw it from the middle at $140. That way we get a perfect roundabout just like this. And that's not a perfect roundabout. That's okay. There we go. And I'm okay with getting rid of some of this industry. We're gonna redevelop this area in a minute anyway. And now we'll go ahead and upgrade the center to one-way roads. And what I'm using here is this three-lane one-way bike road. That way the bikes still have lanes in the middle of the roundabout as well. So we'll delete this center here. I think for a busy street like this, a roundabout's gonna be good. It'll serve sort of the same purpose as the interchange, but it's a little more compact and I think it looks a little nicer. And we'll decorate the inside of that in a minute. I don't like leaving my roundabouts undecorated. I think they look just terrible, like a giant hole in the city. So we are gonna make something of that. For this one for now, we're gonna do just a four-way stop. We do have the tram there and we're gonna end our bike network here but we don't have a place to connect it that makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna reconfigure this just a little bit so that these blocks line up somewhat. And I think that'll be okay for now. And 
that's really close together. I actually don't love that. have regular roads here that aren't quite as fast. Sometimes you'll see that in cities where it's not necessarily a highway anymore, but they've kept some of the infrastructure as they get rid of the highway, such as these sorts of interchanges. And then what we're going to do here to bring some connectivity, we're going to sacrifice some of these houses. They're ugly anyway. I hate them. Calling up my phone like you did. We may have to do some work with the terrain here because that does not seem right. That's a much cleaner alignment. So what we're going to do next is actually convert this standard tram track to a walkable promenade all the way up to the tunnel. And that way we'll connect the road network into it and it'll provide cyclists and pedestrians access to this neighborhood. So next we have this guy and this interchange is beautiful. I actually don't want to get rid of it, but I don't need this anymore. So I want to terminate the boulevard here-ish because what we're going to do on this side of the highway is totally reroute it from the outside connection. So we're gonna go all the way to there and delete all of that. Now, what do we do with this? So I've been thinking about a couple of different ways to do this. This functions effectively as a roundabout. It's a dog bone interchange, but I don't think we really are gonna need this side. So we're gonna start here, and delete a lot of this. And instead, we're gonna continue the bike road. So I wanna connect these back into the bike road wherever I can. I think like that's the best way. And it's okay if we lose a little bit of that fence. So what we're gonna do here now is downgrade this to four lanes. And I think this would actually make a really cool tunnel. So that's what we're gonna do. And then the middle can become sort of a little walkable park. And once we come up here, we're gonna end the road there and connect into here with the bike lane. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall those lanes too. And it looks a little nicer with the tunnel. We've got some nice green space here. It is a little imposing, but I'm gonna come back to it and detail it up and make it sort of a pedestrian space. It, there's a couple of things I'm gonna do to do that, but we'll get to it in a second. So the highway is ended now and cut off. What we really wanna do right now is reroute and get rid of a lot of this. Because of the way the base game map is, this is gonna be a kind of awkward curve. I'm using all of my tiles, so I can't really do much about this. It's just a limitation of the vanilla game, but we're gonna live with it and do something kind of drastic here. So we're gonna create a curve and I want it to be perfectly 90 degrees. So I think that's where we go. And that doesn't look quite right, but that's okay. I'll freehand it. So I'm gonna create an interchange and it's gonna be not perfect. We're gonna make quite the web of spaghetti here to fit everything in correctly. I promise this will look halfway decent once I'm done. Twenty-seven failed attempts later. What we might actually do here something a little radical and go under. And then we've got all three roads here. 
and that's still a little messy, but we're getting there. I think that looks a lot cleaner. And then we can use lane mathematics to downgrade this. And if we want to make it even more symmetrical, what we can do is start, if it'll let me, start right there, come along with the highway, and then come like that. And then I can downgrade those to two lanes. Interchanges are never perfect, and this is probably one of the worst ones I've ever built. <laughs> and I kind of hate it, so let's keep working at it. Almost there. I think this curve just needs to be a little more sweeping. And that looks much nicer. It's still ugly as hell, but I think it's just the angle of this. Let's keep going with our highway reroute project. So now we just need to cross this bridge. Very, very simple, you would think. But it's not, of course. Because we need the terrain to be relatively even on both sides. So we need this height and we want to keep it there. And this is where a lot of terraforming is going to happen so that the bridge is flat and the highway in general is flat and straight. So that looks a lot cleaner. We don't have those wobbly bridges that you sometimes get in vanilla. And that's because we did some terraforming beforehand. And now what I'm going to do here is just smooth it out a little bit. So now I'm going to create a level path for this highway because what we are going to do is we don't have enough soil, so we need to buy some. Again, $49,000, no big deal, I have a ton. And I'm just carving out a path here for this highway. And what that's gonna do is essentially create a beltway around the city, which will give us the bypass route. And then that way, cars that are going between outside connections, that sort of filler traffic, won't be tempted to go in here because there was really no way for them to. And while we're at it, we're gonna make sure that this stays level because we're gonna bridge right over that railroad track. So look at our train. And I'm trying to keep this as smooth and even as possible so that making a parallel segment won't be too difficult. But of course, there's some spots where it's gonna get a little dicey and that's one of those. So we wanna bring the height down to there. And that's where we're gonna cross and then come around to here. And so this is where we're gonna need to create a little larger canyon here. I think we're gonna do it like that. And then what we'll do is we'll gradually lift up the terrain until it meets the end of this. And that way we have a nice clean connection here. Now this is where it gets dicey again. This is terrible, this is horrible terrain. And we're just gonna make it work with this. We're just gonna force its hand. And honestly, this is all pretty terrible. And if we ever develop here, that's not gonna be useful anyway. So we're gonna invest the money now to fix that and make it look nice. And we're gonna slope this entire area so that we have somewhat of a gentle curve here. And as you can see, that doesn't like that so much, but if we just smooth the ground level, it's fine. And now we'll gently cut across this. I don't think that's too, too steep. Now we wanna use our road guidelines here. I'm gonna start there at that guideline and try to find the best place, I think there. That'll give us straight segments on both sides. Yes, exactly. And then that way, that's all connected up. And now we just have to mirror it, which in vanilla is harder than it looks. It's easier said than done. If we go one step at a time, one note at a time, we should be mostly okay. There's gonna be a little bit of weirdness here. See how it's getting closer together? And I don't have a problem with it being this close together, except for now that you get there, you can't build anymore. So the angle's a little off there. And the way that we can fix that is by turning off angle and just snapping to it there and we'll turn the angle road guideline on now. And that angle road guideline just keeps the same angle at whatever the road is. And if you turn it off, it'll give you a little more control. Perfect, look at that. And then this one, we have to do the same thing too. Just push page down there to get it back to ground level. And then this, we probably need to turn angle off. Yes, we do. And we probably need to turn road guidelines off for this node. And then we'll turn them back on. And then from here, we'll turn off angle again get it straight flush with that, and we can turn it back on. And so now we have a freeway connection across here, and we can turn the game speed back on now. So what do we do next? 
We've got all of this new space opened up for development. Well, we can build out and start making some more of these connections. The first thing I want to do is actually get rid of all of this industry. It's well past its usefulness and we don't need any of it anymore. So we're just going to dezone it and rethink this entire neighborhood. And we're going to get rid of some of these structures as well that we don't need anymore, like the emergency shelter and the water. And we're going to relocate this waste transfer facility, but we have to empty it first. Those are way too close now because what we're going to have here is a little more connected neighborhood. And so we're going to have larger blocks and relocate a lot of this stuff. This one, we don't want too close to the roundabout. I'm okay with that being a cul-de-sac as well. But this road here, we are going to connect it and we're going to pause it again because we're going to lose power. So let's fix that. And let's redo this entire grid to match up with the other side of the city. And I like that curve there. And we will make this a bike road. And making this a bike road also gives us easy access to this downtown metro station so that people can bike there. And we'll bring this bike route actually across the entire city all the way to there. And then we'll connect it into here and that way we're bringing more accessibility of alternate methods of transit that aren't just a car into the older parts of town as well. So I think it's safe to make this connection too now. It's okay that that's not perfect. And same here, but what we're gonna do here is actually relocate some of these offices so that we have a better connection overall. That curve's a little ugly, but I think it's okay. We'll make it happen. Oh, of course, now we can relocate it. So where shall we put this? Don't know yet, but I'm thinking back here. Those are houses. I don't want that next to each other. I can redevelop this area into something different. No, that's a bad idea. I'm gonna relocate this over by the industry. And so now this, these two, they're not perfectly aligned. So I think I am gonna make them aligned. And I'm gonna make a temporary connection there. I'm actually gonna get rid of it because it shouldn't be too close to the roundabout. But we are gonna do something there that's a little different. We're gonna tunnel underneath. I think that'll be really cool. And that way there is still connectivity between these areas, but we don't have too many crossings close together. And I'm okay with keeping this arterial road sort of free of junctions. We're gonna come back and develop this in a minute, but for now, I wanna get the bones of the neighborhood in. So we have this frontage road sort of here, and we're gonna make it a proper frontage road just like on the other side and come off like this. I think along the frontage road, we're gonna do commercial and then zone the rest of that as residential. But I'm gonna save the rest for once we finish our boulevard. So here, this is another area that's become a bit outdated and really should not be in the center city. We've got our power plants here. We've got a bunch of industry and garbage here, really close to downtown. So the first thing I wanna do is relocate our power plants to somewhere that's a little more compatible like this industrial area here, because we're gonna develop this all into nicer residential and commercial usage. And it's okay to have some industry mixed in because this area is this beautiful, sort of rugged hilly area with some trees and it's doing it a supreme disservice by having this mess here like would you want this to be so close to your downtown probably not so goodbye and again we're gonna rethink this entire road network we are gonna keep the cable car in place though i like that it's there i like that it's providing an extra layer of connectivity but for the rest of this we are gonna relocate most of this the thing with these is it's garbage so it's hard because we want garbage coverage on this side of the city as well. So we are going to create an area over here that's kind of a little out of the way and come up here so that we don't hit the water. And we are going to fix that terrain so that we can hook into here. And that way we can have an alternate route here. We can put some garbage processing here. And that way it's still close enough, but it's not as imposing right next to downtown. And this is actually a good candidate for a future industrial area. The only red flag I see is how close those water pumps are. And we have enough money that we can always relocate them. And now here, we're gonna connect in our pedestrian road. Actually, I don't like that one. We're gonna do that one. And we're gonna make that a pedestrian road as well. 
And that way that's all well connected and integrated. So what do we do now with this? I think it's time to develop this, but we do need some sort of collector road in this area to sort of take traffic from this to this. And I think that's a good candidate for that. So we're gonna upgrade this to the four lane road. We're gonna do a standard four lane road and we are gonna follow the train and get rid of a lot of that and hook it into here. And what we can actually do is these terrains are relatively the same height. We can just do that. And we'll come along the hillside like this and then up to there. And now that doesn't work either. And it's okay that those are pretty close together right here. And reworking the road network can be trial and error. Diana screws this up 15 times again before getting it right. We're gonna get rid of all of this and reimagine it. Cause just to be real with y'all, it looks like shit. Okay, so the terrain here, it's pretty bad, but it's not so bad here that we can just curve in there, curve around to there. This road with the median, and we'll use bikes too. And we're gonna create a little parkway. I don't know what that really means, but it's kind of a sort of collector road through here that we're gonna use as the backbone of this that we're gonna build a little neighborhood in, but it's not really meant for high volumes of traffic. It's just more meant to look nice. And then I don't care about those rocks. I'm sorry. If it was one of the big rock structures, I probably would, but this is just gonna be sort of a little circle on the top of the hill here. And then around the hill, We'll do a little terrace, and that's gonna look really cool once it's developed out. Some of the slopes are a little weird, but I'm not too worried. And that way, the downtown grid sort of breaks down into this organic pattern once the hill starts. And we'll continue this to about here. I don't want it to go all the way to that road because that's more of an arterial, and this is more of a collector. Now here's another thing that I think could be reworked a little bit, is we will allow for some curves. And then along this part of the boulevard, we're not gonna put any development. So I'm okay with doing something like that. But I just call it being free. And now through here, we're just gonna do a simple mirroring pattern where we mirror the main road one block back. So we're doing the 10 unit box, which is $400. And then that way we have this sort of pattern that matches up with the road and that's common. And we'll stop it there. We'll let that be a cul-de-sac. For this area, I'm gonna keep it empty. We're gonna do something with it. Unless I can sneak this through without breaking those rocks. I might be able to. No, I cannot. But I do want one more connection. So I'm gonna be okay with that. I'm just bringing as much connectivity between these blocks as possible. And we might split up this large block into one more grid. And another thing I wanna do here is Break this fence and bring in some nodes of connectivity here so that they can walk here and then get to this cable car stop. Not that they need to. And now let's go ahead and develop this. So along the boulevard here, first thing I wanna do is put fencing. I actually don't want any kind of zoning of any type in this section of the boulevard. And we're also gonna put fencing around the roundabout. And then for here, I'm just creating pedestrian paths to give some connectivity. And along this, we're also going to fence this off here. And let's go ahead and start with commercial along the main roads here, because I think that's a good place to put it. And we have decent commercial demand, so that should grow over time. And on this side of the boulevard, I actually am going to allow some commercial development to happen. And then also along the walkable tram line, mostly high density, but I added a little bit of commercial along it as well. And we'll put a little bit of high density here along this main road. And then for much of the rest of this, we're looking at residential here. And because we have a lot of industrial demand, some of that can be satisfied by office, but I'm gonna put another industry area here and we're gonna use the new industrial evolution content creator pack as a district style. Cause the buildings look infinitely better than the vanilla base game industrial buildings. And there's enough office buffering that, that I think some industry here is gonna be okay. And I don't think we really need that power line anymore. What's it connecting to? Oh, our sewage, which I think, yeah, it's connected. 
Okay, and now we are pretty low in demand. So what we need to do is actually improve the land value of the place that we're trying to build in. And now we're gonna do that is, is bring in lots of nice little parks. I absolutely love this little pond and I think it'll go great right there. The terrain's a little wonky. So let's see if we can find a better place for it. I think actually here, yeah, look at that. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than the other place. Let's continue adding in parks here. We also wanna do a little bit of death care and health care because even though we have a lot of availability for it, we want the bonuses for this neighborhood. Now our schools, our high school capacity is getting kind of near where capacity's at. So we are gonna put in a new high school. We might put it kind of near the soccer stadium if I can fit it. Let's see, I can actually fit it right there. And it looks ugly right now, but we'll get it sorted out. And while we're at it, we can get elementary school coverage here. Let's do it. And we will wanna get a library in here as well because we are bringing an office and we want the adult citizens to get educated. I don't mind this terrain difference. I'm gonna cover it up with some landscaping in a bit. So one issue that we do have now that we need to remedy soon is since we've taken the highway entirely out of this part of town, we now have only one way for outside traffic to actually get into the city and it's here. So we have a lot of work to do. We need to figure out how to have a couple of direct routes from the main town over to the highway so that we're not relying on this. And over time, we can get rid of this freeway as well because this is the bulk of our backup. So what I think we need to do is actually reroute a lot of this because this road is our main street of the city. It crosses from the ocean all the way here to this neighborhood, which I've always called Koreatown, so that's what we're calling it now, from now on, because we use the heart of Korea buildings. So we're actually gonna give the district a name. But anyway, it goes from Koreatown all the way to the beach, but now there's just no way. And for some reason, we have a bus here that's, I don't know why the bus is doing that. Is there a bus line there that I don't know about? See, there is. This is where the bus used to go. So what we're gonna do here is actually delete these stops because the bus is confused. Let's find out what line this is. So that's line number five. We're just gonna delete that line and reconfigure it because there's things that we need to do that we aren't doing. So first of all, this whole avenue is gonna have to change. So we have to pause it again. And this tram line is probably gonna have to be rerouted as well. So let's go ahead and reimagine this entire neighborhood. So first of all, the tram road. So the tram is kind of coming around here, which we can still do. We just have to redo it in a way that makes a little more sense and looks a little better as well. Let's look at our train. It's shit. it's garbage, it's crap. I don't care. We're gonna bring it around this way. And the reason I'm pausing this too is because we are gonna delete a bunch of power. Let's get our one lane tram road down or two lane tram road and come around here so that we complete the tram loop and that'll fix itself. And then here, this is where we're gonna do our connection to the outside. And I think that's an okay place to put it. And we could just build a perfectly straight, easy interchange. But where's the challenge in that? The terrain is also crap here. So what we need to do is fix that. I have nothing but the utmost disrespect for the terrain on this map. When I have this much money and I'm this profitable, I could care less. So we want as flat a pad as possible here for an interchange, but we also have to get up somehow. So let's give this the old college try. Now I should just delete all of these trees, but there's so many and it's so tedious. Like, look at that. It's just gonna take me forever. So I'm not gonna worry about it. At this point, it's not worth my time. So start with this straight section right there and reconnect this. Now, how's the terrain there? It's still pretty bad. I think what we're gonna have to do is gradually make our way up before we do the interchange. So let's put the cart before the horse and actually just build the interchange first and then figure out how to connect to it afterwards. So what I want to do is a simple partial cloverleaf, old reliable. And so I'm creating this two 10 unit segments here like that. And then I'm coming down 12 units, which is $2,920 on each side, right there. And to build this, I'm gonna use dirt roads and we're gonna keep it pretty simple. So 10 units down here. I'm gonna come up about there. That's about seven 
units. And then we're gonna come about there to about there. And it doesn't have to be perfectly clean. And so here I'm coming out $440, which is about 22 units or so. We wanna make this look cleaner, we can. We can actually create a little bit shorter road here and then shorter curves. And that looks a little better. It's still not perfectly circular, but in real life, these are never perfectly circular. So I'm not gonna stress about it. And they're not also not perfectly symmetrical in real life, but we'll try our best to get it close. And the thing with a partial clover leaf is you generally want opposite sides. So you want the curves to be on opposite sides where a right turn from here is gonna take you around the bend. So that's what we're gonna do here in a similar fashion. And we do want to try to get it as close to the highway as possible so that we can just come straight underneath. So what we wanna do next is find a node that we can safely kind of connect into like that. And we do that on the other side as well. And because this highway isn't perfectly straight, I'm not too worried about being symmetrical. I do sort of want my ramps to meet up in the same spot on each side here. So using dirt roads is the easiest way to achieve this because they're just much easier to work with. If you use highway ramps, they'll give you weird road bending and stuff that we don't want. And so that's the simplest partial clover leaf. What I am gonna do to make this a little more efficient is we're gonna add an additional ramp here on each side so that turns can sort of exist somewhat conflict-free. That looks really clean. It's a great interchange, one of the best in the game. It's gonna handle high capacity of traffic well. And so that's why I'm giving it these extra lanes. And what we're gonna do here now is use this two-way highway. And if traffic gets too bad, we can always add another lane, but we're gonna start there. And the two-way highway goes on these curves because we wanna get off either way. And that's gonna split here. And on this side, I'm gonna go here and here. And that way in the future, when we have a road coming this way, Traffic coming off of here will have a way to get on the highway. We don't really need it right now, but we're planning for the future because even though I'm at the end of the vanilla nine tiles, I'm probably gonna upgrade it to 25 tiles at some point if we keep the series going. So on this side, we do the same thing because when we're coming to the right, the traffic doesn't have to make a left turn to go around. And then this is a two lane highway. And we just wanna make sure the directionality is right by using the upgrade button here and right clicking each segment and that'll change the directionality. So for these, typically I do like to make these two lanes as well. And then what we can do is actually use this asymmetrical three-way and the asymmetrical three-way road will give us dedicated lanes for left and right turns. It'll make traffic a little more free flowing, especially because we expect this to be relatively high volume. So now's the hard part, <laughs> figuring out how to connect this to this because there's a lot of terrain challenges and it's not gonna be easy. So we have some options here, none of which I like. We are gonna start over with this and we may have to redo the tram line entirely. This is the option I like the least, but this is the most viable option. Fortunately, we have to remove some parkland to create a road and connect to the highway. So let's do it. Let's look at the terrain. Now that is not good terrain and it's gonna not be good terrain, but we can smooth it out. This is the worst oh, thing ever. Man. But now what we have, the very least, is we're gonna have some connectivity to the tram line here. And that way that loop stays intact and we'll figure out the rest later. So let's go to our regular three lane road. Use the one with the median here. And so that six lane road, it's pretty freaking steep. There's not much I can do about that. It's not realistic at all, but we'll make it work. And now we have at least another outside connection. And we don't really have any other good ways to get to the highway here. We do have this, but I'm trying to keep this away from the highway for now. So that at least gives us two ways for cars to get off the highway. And now we have this bus road that's not really going anywhere. So I think we are gonna do something with it, but we're gonna reroute it a little bit and we'll just cut across the train. And instead, we're gonna make it go this way and then out to the future neighborhood and tee it in there. And that looks a little more reasonable. It's still not great, but I think I know what I'm gonna do. And we're actually not gonna make that a bus road. We are gonna make it a normal road. And now we have all this developable land here that we can work with and we can extend out this grid. And now we've opened up a lot more developable land. And even though the terrain is pretty awful, 
and it looks like absolute garbage. Over time, it'll start to look nicer. We're gonna fix a lot of this. To clean it up quite a bit, cause this all just doesn't look good anymore. And now that's a lot cleaner. We'll replace a lot of this residential and bring it back. And along this main road, we'll bring in some commercial. So while we're waiting for the demand to pick back up, what we can do is come back and decorate everything. And that wants to be dense. We want some higher density here. So let's go ahead and decorate the roundabout. And how I want to do that is find a nice signature rock maybe and put it in the middle here. I'm thinking something like that. It's pretty, it's understated, it's not too intense. I am gonna get that a little more centered and maybe actually do this one. That's nice. And then around it, we'll just throw in some trees. And just a few simple trees and rocks in the roundabout makes it look a little more planned, a little more organic and alive, and it really does spruce things up. And in general, if we just fill this area out with some trees, it won't look so barren. Because right now, the areas around roundabouts are hard to really make look nice in the vanilla game, but that's okay. We have tools like trees. this new little small playground that came with the hotels and retreats pack it's good for tight little spaces like this and then I can spruce it up and decorate it a little bit with some more trees make this whole area feel a little more planned out and detailing things up like this with extra trees does increase the land value of a place a lot and the attractiveness of it so if you don't have any demand like me right now you can always just take some time to pay attention to the neighborhoods that you're working on to make them look nicer with little things like this, especially in these sort of blank spaces, which really look terrible. All it takes to make them look so much nicer is just a few trees here and there. And from above, it already looks better. And I find these dense trees like this live oak are perfect for this kind of detailing where you want to cover a lot of space effectively without too much effort. And it makes it look so lush and full. And then I'll throw in palm trees here and there, or conifers, just anything to really make it feel like there's a lot of trees here. And we're already starting to see some zoning come in. So it is helping. typically just pick a palette of a few different trees and stick to those in any one area, but vary them up just enough so it does look like a natural forest. Sometimes I'll throw in some new ones here and there. And look at that, we're getting a lot of usage out of this new interchange. Even though that looks goofy, it works so well. Our traffic flow has gone up to 85% now. It was at 81% when we started, so we've gained four percentage points just by removing this freeway and rerouting all of the outside traffic along this new alignment. And over time, this is gonna develop. So let's keep going and get this area zoned out too. varying up the different zoning types and density to make a more dynamic mixed-use neighborhood. That way we're just not limited to one specific style of building, one specific zoning type. 
That way people can walk to anywhere they need to go pretty easily. And then behind here, we're gonna buffer the noise of these ramps with some more trees, just like that. Now for in here, that's all gonna be residential and we are gonna use a district style for it. We're gonna go back to European suburbia just for in here. And then we'll keep this going as office on this side. And again, we're gonna fill a lot of this with trees. And as you can see, it is coming in very slowly but surely. We are getting quite a bit of commercial come in and residential. And over time, all of this area that we freed up because of the freeway will now be beautifully developed land. Now what I want to do with the area in between this interchange is just turn it into a nice little park. It's not going to be a formal park, but I want to bring in pedestrian paths underground here if I can. When I met you in the summer, then you weren't such a bummer, and I wasn't as critical as I am now. Oh, I wish we could rewind and be younger. Don't like that that's not perfectly aligned, but we have to live with the vanilla game's weirdness and quirks. And now this becomes an actual usable functioning pedestrian path as opposed to just decorations. And it's not great, it looks kind of bad, but I'm gonna cover that up with some landscaping. Yeah, yeah, I've had enough, love, say you had enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had enough, love, yeah, I've had enough. Oh, oh, say you had enough. And there we go. It doesn't look great, but it functions, it works and people are already starting to walk and bike through it. So there was demand for that path. It's being used just for consistency with the tunnels is we're gonna upgrade these from gravel. Even though I liked the way the gravel looked a little better, I think this looks better with the tunnels, which are pavement paths. And that looks a little more consistent. I think we can have gravel in the middle still because those aren't being used, they're just decorative. And then what we are gonna do in the center here because let's face it, that something that high speed isn't gonna cut it. We're gonna do the one-way bus road. And I wish we had a three-lane one-way bus road, but that's okay. We're gonna turn off zoning. Oh, that is three lanes, okay. We're gonna turn off zoning on, on the entire thing. And that'll slow down cars a little bit. It'll add sidewalks too which will make the entire thing a little more pedestrian friendly. And that way it's not so high speed. And that way we are also preserving some of the infrastructure that already existed here that was working and just integrating it into the boulevard that we've created. And we've turned this interchange into kind of a cute little piece of city parkland, which I think is really neat. And I think we've got enough industrial demand that we'll probably have to grow things a little more. So, I'm seeing an opportunity to create a collector road here, and we're gonna do that. And the terrain is, once again, not our friend. I don't really care. And we can identify other areas. When we're designing a layout, the terrain here is not good. And that's one consideration we want to take is how much terraforming do we want to do? And I think we want to do a bit, especially in here in this little basin. And on this side, 
We have a one-way couplet that we can keep going, and that turn's not terrible, but I do want this to align pretty straight with this. So we're gonna come up about there and then curve it in like that. And then with this one, we are gonna come quite a bit down because what I want it to be is about 10 units difference and then make its way up here. And that way it naturally finds its way into this grid that we're gonna build out here. And what I'm basically doing is just laying out the groundwork for a new neighborhood. And when laying out a new neighborhood, I like to think about how should it feel? Should it be gridded? Should it be organic? How big should the grid be? We've got this nice 10 unit grid here. And I think we can extend that and build it out. This I'm not in love with, so I'm probably going to redo that and make it straight in this too. I was gonna follow the terrain and I still am to some extent, but I'm not gonna be as strict with it. So I'm gonna come straight there because we have a lot of flat land to work with now. And unfortunately this game prefers the grid system over anything else just because of how the buildings develop, especially in vanilla, that we'll make do. I'm just varying up the grid to mirror the terrain and the curves here. Cause after that, that's where the terrain's gonna get funky again. And we're not gonna play with that today. I just wanna start a little extra industry here cause we have a pretty strong need for it. And we'll extend this district with industrial evolution. Cause I do think in general, these industrial buildings, they're quite nice. They're much better than the base game. And I recommend getting this content creator pack. So let's go ahead and zone out a little bit of commercial along this main road and along this one because all of our demand is commercial right now and that'll be a good buffer for when we do decide to develop this area for residential and so now this area is developed out quite nicely and even though those do look a little weird on the hill we can fix that pretty easily with some landscaping which is what i'm going to do here just put some trees to cover up the most egregious looking cliffs and that way, it looks a little more natural. And so what we've been able to do here is take what was once a divided scar through the center of the city and turn it into an integrated part, bringing these two neighborhoods together. And this boulevard has the same amount of automotive throughput. It functions exactly the same way as this freeway was and gives us much more access. The roundabout's doing great. This boulevard looks beautiful. And we've opened up so much more new land for development and just generally created a more well-connected city. Of course, here with the train tracks, it's a little harder to bring in true connectivity, but we do still have this road that works. We have lots of houses, parkland, trees, and everything else. And because we've rerouted all of the outside traffic, we've gained 3% traffic flow, but importantly, We've reduced it in the center of town and just brought it to the outskirts here where it's not quite as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. 